Hey everyone. Hey everyone coming in. God bless you all. How's everyone going? Mm -hmm. Let's double tap shed alive. Amen. Hello B. Bye B. Mmm, yes, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's double tap shed alive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mmm. Just wait for more people to come in. We are going to speak about surrender. Amen. But in the meantime, everyone that's here, If you are a part of this flock, let's double tap and shed alive. Amen. If you're not, then you're welcome to swipe next. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Don't let them formed against me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work God will do what he say he will do he will stand by his word. Oh, he will. God will do what he say. He will do. And I'll stand by his word. Hey, Laura. God bless you. It won't work. No weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work god will do what he say he will do and he'll stand by his word Yes, he will. Come on, guys. Let's double tap and shed alive. Amen. If you're coming in, let's double tap, shed alive. It's not hard to double tap, guys. You're just sitting there. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hora ba 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 shikaya de 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 shete yanada. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, I love the sun on my face. I love the peace that God gives us. I love the joy that he gives us. In the midst of chaos, that's how you know when people carry Jesus when people know Jesus, by the way that they stand, by the way that they rest. Hallelujah. That's why we are going to be talking about rest your soul. Amen. So we are resting our soul. Kia ora, kia ora, kia ora. And so we are going to be speaking about surrendering, brothers and sisters. 
So let's share the live, amen, because someone is going to be blessed by this word. Hallelujah. The word that the Father is giving me to speak regard is to be still and know that He is God. Be still and know that He is God. Amen, somebody. We always try and do everything in our own works. And we know that doesn't work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hoorah, ba, 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 ba. Amen. Come on, Laura. So we're going to speak about the Father telling us to be still and know that He is God. Amen. So anyone that's coming in, you know, guys, if you're feeling weary, you're feeling like you just can't do it, you're feeling like you need a breakthrough, you're feeling like you're just like the world is on top of you. If God has led you here, He's led you here for a reason. Amen. And I know that this is a message that is going to help people understand their walk in Christ. Hallelujah. Because all people need, brothers and sisters, is someone to just share their experience, to share what they've gone through, to share how they walk. Amen. And to share their um, their routine. What do you do? You know, Um when you wake up in the morning, you know, do you, do you, do you instantly seek him first? You know, is he the first fruit that you, um, do you give your first fruit to God or do you jump on your phone or do you, do you go and do something else before you say good morning to him, before you acknowledge him, honor him in the day today? Amen. Does that make sense? So sometimes we just need someone that can just lead us through a path of chaos and Jesus did that for us. Jesus did that for us. Amen, somebody. So let's just double tap. Let's get this to 1K. And when it gets to 1K, we're going to open up in prayer. Hallelujah. We're going to open up in prayer. And then as we always do, we enter his gates with gratitude. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. So we pray. We enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. We enter his courts with praise. Amen. Give me a second. Distractions. People are distracted. All right, we just bind up all distractions. Come on now. We just bind up all distractions right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Perfect. We're in 1K. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Mm. 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 I don't know about you guys, but every person under my voice, ask, I, I, I want to ask you this question. You don't have to type it. You don't have to respond to it. But I want you to examine yourself. Do you have peace? Do you have love? Do you have joy? And then you've got to ask yourself, where does that peace, that love or joy comes from? Because if you're still getting your peace, your love and your joy from the world, then it's going to run out. This is why Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, if you drink from me, you'll never thirst. But every time we drink from the world, we thirst for something. Trust me, I'm a walking testimony of this, brothers and sisters. I, um, everything was a band-aid for me. The father said to me, Mercedes, everything is a band-aid. But Jesus Christ is the cure. And my band-aids were drugs, alcohol, sex, anything that, that gave me a, a, a high in life, that was a band-aid for me. It wasn't until that I encountered Jesus that I recognized everything is meant to be found in him. Blessings, Apostle. Love you, Uncle. 
So let's open up in prayer, brothers and sisters, because as I was just opening up in prayer, I have such peace. I have such joy. I have such absolute tranquility that the world doesn't give to me. It's because I know I'm in him and he's in me and that we are one. See, as the Father's quickening my spirit, he says, perfect love drives out all fear. And when you are outside, if you have any fear, any guilt, any condemnation, um, any shame, any, any um, anxiety, anything like that, that means you're not in his perfect love. Amen. That means you're not in his perfect love. Because he's not a God that he should lie. He says perfect love drives out all fear, brothers and sisters. So let's put our hands together and lift up prayers and gratitude to today, to wherever you are. May the Spirit of the Lord locate you and let's come together and pray. Thank you, Father. So I want you to just take a big breathe in for me. Let's do it together. Just breathe in life. And any, any heaviness, anything that's opposing God, I want you to breathe it all out. Sometimes it's just so much going on in here that we just need some breath. We need some life into our minds. Amen. So I want you to just take a massive breathing in. Breathe in because breathing is life. Breathing is life. Hallelujah. Breathing is life. Hallelujah. So I just want you to take a big breather in. So just hold it for five seconds. And just breathe it out. Just one more time. Just breathe in life, brothers and sisters. Just breathe it in. You know, meditating is just meditating on the goodness of God. Meditating is just meditating on the breath of God. Amen. Because it was breath that breathed into the dust and formed Adam. Remember that. It was breath that was breathed into dust and formed a man called Adam. So do not do you not think that God needs to breathe in us to release anything that's not of God? Amen. So just one more. Just... See, every time I do that, brothers and sisters, I just get this peace. I get this joy that just raptures me up in his spirit, in his presence. So let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ooh, thank you, Father. Father, we just come humbly before you right now in a heart posture of humility, Lord God. We come knowing that we are in you and that you are in us and that we are one and anything outside of you is deception. Anything outside of your perfect love is deception, Father. And Lord, we acknowledge you where we stand. We acknowledge you. We acknowledge you. We are aware of you dwelling in us and around us. That you are everything that we see and that you are everything that we can't see, Father. And so, Lord, we come before you boldly into your throne room of grace, completely submissive to you, completely under your authority, under your jurisdictions, for we have been created through you. We just welcome the seven spirits of God into this day. We welcome you, we honor you, and we engage with every one of you. We call forth wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, the fear of the Lord, the power of your might and the spirit of the Lord. We welcome you, we honor you and we engage with you right now. We pray as we decrease, Father, that you would increase in us, that you would increase, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. As we come into your presence, Lord God, you give us fresh manna, daily manna, new revelations. And I just pray, God, for every one of us that you would give us a great knowledge of the image that we have been created by, 
that you would pour out your spirit of revelation and your spirit of truth upon this life that I just dispatch all angels to obliterate every wickedness every satanic assignment every antichrist spirit that will come against this word in the mighty name of Jesus I speak to everything that is under my voice I pull down all strongholds of our mind right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every tongue who rise up against us shall be condemned in the mighty name of Jesus I rebuke all distraction right now and I just pray for God's love to come upon you right now I pray for his peace to surround you right now and anything that's opposing to the spirit I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would you would just take off that burden take off that burden off you right now any problems any any heaviness i want you to lay it at his feet right now amen because when we come into the presence of god where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty brothers and sisters so if you are carrying anything i pray in the name of jesus that you would surrender it now whatever is going on in your mind surrender it now in the name of jesus thank you father I lift off any heaviness off you right now. I decree and declare by the word that dwells within me, the quickening spirit that dwells within me. I quicken every mortal body under me right now in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and declare every dry thing under my voice must come to life in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you the glory, God. We give you the praise and we give you the honor. Be magnified, be glorified, be enriched in our spirit, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray, O God, that you take us from glory to glory. Brothers and sisters, as we are praying, I want you to think on his goodness. I want you to think on what he set you free from. I want you to think on what he's, what he's delivered you from, what he's what the bondages, the shackles that he's delivered you from, from sin and death. I want you to truly acknowledge that God has delivered you from sin and death. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just take our eyes off ourselves, Lord God. Anywhere that we have placed our eyes upon ourselves, where we have been doing it in our works, Lord. Where we've been doing it in our works, oh God. Father, we repent right now. I repent in the act of my will and on behalf of my brothers and sisters. I repent, oh God, for anywhere that we have done it in our own works. Anywhere that we've done it by our own accord, Father, where we have not acknowledged you in working through the kingdom with you, Father, in doing the kingdom work with you, Father, for you call us to be co-heirs and co-rulers, O oh God. So, Father, I repent right now, Lord God, on behalf of myself and every person under my voice right now, Lord, that you would have mercy upon our souls, that you would come and refresh us, restore us, replenish us, revive us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the praise and we give the honor. We pray, God, that you pour out your, your grace upon us afresh right now. That you pour out your grace afresh upon us right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So, Lord, not my will, let your will be done. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Get behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. Harpalega, I love you, but you are not welcome here. Thank you, Father. You are going to come and distract the word of God. I rebuke you. I pray that the Lord would set you free. Hallelujah. We give you Father glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. 
Pisces. Come on, guys. We enter his courts with thanksgiving. Now we have prayed, and now we are entering his courts with praise. Now we're going to lift up holy hands to him. Amen. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you oh we worship you Lord come on worship him to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you come on I want you to just lift your hands up to him lift your heart upon him lift your soul to him just lift yourself to him take him let him take you from glory to glory to worship you I live to worship you I live I live to worship you oh Think on his goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, your presence is like sweet honey to my lips. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, your presence is like sweet honey to my lips. Oh Lord, your presence is like sweet honey to my lips. For I thank you, Lord, you have set us free from sin and death. Thank you, Father. No man can come and steal your glory from you, Lord. No man can come and steal your glory from you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you that our infirmity can't touch you, Jesus. Christ, thank you, Father. As I think of your goodness and what you've set me from, from, thank you, Father. Let's think on his goodness. Oh, Lord, I think about your goodness that makes me rise. Oh, Lord. I think about your goodness that gets me out of bed. Hallelujah. For you are my joy. For you are my peace. You are my eternal life. 
Thank you, Father. You are my peace. You are my joy. You are my eternal life. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. As we think of your goodness, Ooh, it's so sweet. There is none like you, Lord. For we were mortals, raptured up by immortality. When we were dead in our sins, you came along and raised these dry bones before you, Lord. So, Lord, put a new song in our spirit and deliver us from the ways of the world as we decrease. We pray, Lord, as we surrender to you, that you would increase in us, Lord. There is none like you, no one else, no one else can touch my heart like you do. Thank you, Father. Ooh, I love his presence, guys. I could search the world eternity long and find there is none, there is none, there is none like you. <laughs> We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you that our peace is only found in you. We thank you that our love is being consumed by you and your love has consumed us, Lord. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, it won't work. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Hallelujah. For it won't work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is not going to be a, a um, long one. It's going to be a short one. I'm probably going to be able to just give you half an hour before I jump on a live, a Zoom, which I really do need to be a part of. Um, but in the half an hour, ooh, what God can do in half an hour, brothers and sisters, is phenomenal. Amen. So with a willing heart, God has come and softened the ground so as i speak the word it will go directly into your hearts amen so i want to speak about resting your soul and that's okay uncle brothers and sisters i want to just speak about resting your soul there's a rest hear what the spirit of the lord is saying there's a rest that the body has not been able to tap into. Now I say that boldly because the amount of people that come to my message, the amount of people that come to my inbox, so weary, struggling in, the, struggling in their life, struggling in their walk, it just shows me how many people have not entered the promised land. Now, Scripture says, those who have unbelief or doubt, 
or wickedness in their heart cannot enter the promised land. So not many people have manifested the kingdom from within. Are you catching that? Because if you were able to manifest the kingdom from within, you would be able to have peace, have love, and have joy. And then as, as people come around you, they would feel that love, they would feel that peace, and they would feel that joy because you have been able to manifest the kingdom from within. And don't get me wrong, it is a process, brothers and sisters. But Jesus said this, and this is what the Father's been putting on my heart recently, is be still and know that he is God. So then you've got to recognize and you've got to examine yourself. Are you being still and knowing that he is God? Or are you stepping out of his jurisdictions? Are you stepping out of your protection? Are you stepping out of the covering? Are you stepping out and doing it all on your own? Whether it's finance, whether it's that job that you need, whether whatever, whatever thing that you need in this world, brothers and sisters, are you doing it on your own? See, we've got to be a church that does it with him. Amen. We have to be a kingdom known who partners with God. Amen. So then you've got to examine yourself, brothers and sisters. Are you partnering with God in your walk? Are you partnering with God in your walk? Because if you are partnering with God in your walk, your soul should be rested. Amen. Your soul should be rested. See, all these people that are worried about salvation and like, oh, you know, I don't know if a lot of people actually don't even have assurance in their salvation because they haven't had the knowledge of God or a revelation of Jesus Christ. So then I'm just going to just give simple things. Are you partnering with God? Are you partnering with God with your finances? Are you partnering with God with your with your with your work? Are you partnering with God with your job? Are you partnering with God with your with your family? Are you partnering with God with your marriage? See, Jesus came to reveal how we are to partner with the Father. Are you catching that? Because in the Old Testament, they didn't partner with God. At the start in the book of Genesis, they didn't partner with God. They actually lost their partnership with God because they did it all on their own works. With the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, disobedient, you know, disobeying God, eating from the fruit, as we all know, and then all mankind fell. So then, so then mankind fell down from God conscious, meaning doing it with God, to physical conscious, to to um, carnal conscious, meaning doing it by the flesh. Is that making sense? So then you've got to recognize where you at with your walk. Are you doing it by the flesh or are you doing it by his spirit? See, Adam and Eve, they were already... They were already, um, they already carried the fullness of God. They already carried it. They just hadn't stepped into it. But then they got given information that they were too immature to know. When, when, when the devil said, when Lucifer said to, to the woman that you will be just like God knowing good and evil. Are you catching that, brothers and sisters? Think about our walk in this world. We started learning good and evil in this world, right? 
See, we overcomplicate God with all the rubbish that we've allowed into our soul, into our hearts, into our bodies, into our minds, all of it. So then we came to this world and because we didn't have someone in our family who could feed us life, catch that, who was raised by God to feed us life, we ate from our parents and I've already spoken on this. We ate from our parents who taught us good and evil. Amen. See, children are like sponges. And that's how we were. When we were formed in our mother's belly, came out, we were like sponges. See, that's why I don't like swearing around children. I mean, I don't even swear at all. I mean, there's times where obviously it comes out because God's still dealing with some areas in my heart. But children are like sponges. And what they hear is what starts conditioning them. So if they hear violence, anger, they hear abuse and all sorts of wickedness in their home, that comes into their soul. Now that's them, do you know what I'm trying to say? That's them, that comes into their soul and now that's in them. This is why God wants us to be so protective of our ear gates, our eye gates and our mouth gates. Because no one taught us how to be human beings. No one taught us um, the correct way. But now, because we know good and evil, what are we doing? We are choosing life. Amen? So we've just done a massive circle, brothers and sisters, where we were children we were babes, we were babies, and then we were going, we were, you know, learning things from our parents, learning things from our, you know, learning things from our parents and learning things from our environment, all that kind of stuff. Anything that's manifesting, anything that manifested in your environment while you were growing up, that's what you have taken on. Blindly and ignorantly, and obviously children are pure. They don't know any better. They don't know any better that mum and dad are arguing and they shouldn't they, they like they shouldn't be eating from that. But when they hear mum and dad arguing, that's where it starts perverting their love. Are you catching that? That's where it starts perverting the eye gates. Mm-hmm. Because they see mum and dad arguing and all they knew was love with mum and dad, but then when they see mum and da dad arguing, there's a, there's a, do you know what I'm trying to understand, do you know what I'm trying to say to you guys? It starts defiling the eye gates. Mm-hmm. It starts defiling the eye gates, the ear gates, the mouth gates. People swear enough around you, what are children going to do? They're going to swear. As the Father's quickening my spirit right now, it's not what goes in that makes you unclean. It's what comes out of you that makes you unclean. So it's what you allow, brothers and sisters, to go into your wells. So that's where we have to have a seal. That's where we have to have to, um, we have to guard our ear gates, eye gates, mouth gates, heart gates. We've got to guard it all. Because if we allow that in, guess what? Bitterness is going to come out. Resentment is going to come out. Anger is going to come out. Murder is going to come out. Because of what we've allowed into our ear gates, into our eye gates, into our mouth gates. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you just little things to think about, brothers and sisters. It's all about resting your soul. And so Jesus came to restore everything that happened to us as a child. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying here. So Jesus came to restore everything. Jesus came to restore everything that came into eye gates, ear gates, mouth gates, soul gates, all gates.
That's right. Trailblazer, it starts to taint with our imagination and our mind. Mm -hmm. Yep, like we, you know, watching pornography, you start tainting your eye gates. Then your eye gates have been tainted. Then your mind starts thinking of all these wicked, wicked, dirty fantasies and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 100%. So then you've got to picture yourself as a as a glass, as a jar, right? Think about that, just, just as a metaphor. See yourself as a jar and think about how old you are right now. And think about all the crap, all the all the wickedness that has been poured into you, 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 poured into you. See, now Jesus came to clean it all out and flush us out with the living water. Amen. So he came to flush out our eye gates, flush out our ear gates, flush out, flush out our whole, our all gates, all the gates. He came to renew us. So out of our mouth speaks the abundance of our heart. Or out of our heart speaks up, yeah, out of our mouth speaks abundance of our heart. Amen. And that's what to do. He's come to flush out the wickedness. He's come to flush out all that filth. All that filth. All of it. So personally, you think about your walk, where you've been, where you've come from, what you used, what you did, all of that has to be completely washed out because if there's still all of that in there, if there's even a bit of that in there, it still taints the wells, brothers and sisters. And this is why I need to, I need to, this is why I want to speak on today about resting your soul. You've got to rest your soul in God so he can flush everything out. Um, so he can flush things out for you. See, thank you, Father. The Father was just showing me a metaphor or a, just a vision, just a picture, just spirit, just um, a vision in my spirit where the living water is getting poured in. And all this yuckiness is coming up to the point that we become overfilled by the Holy Spirit. Are you catching that? So when more of Jesus is getting poured in, all that wickedness is coming up. It's getting revealed. Everything that's in the darkness will come to the light. So all that wickedness is coming up. And, and I pray, this is why this is... Um, this is why it's about talking today about surrendering. And we're here to surrender. Amen. And so the more you surrender, brothers and sisters, the more Jesus can clean it out. Clean it out. Clean out your heart. Clean out your heart. Clean out your soul. Clean out all that wickedness that you've, you, you've received in the world. Whether, um, you know, you've been hurt by someone, you've been cheated on by someone, uh, or you've done the cheating or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? So that's how God was just showing me. He's pouring in the living water and he's washing us out. He's pouring in the living water. I just saw him just showing me the living water and we're like jars. And so the more the water's coming up, we're allowing God to, to, to pour out more of him as we decrease all the dross. That's right, apostle. All the dross is coming up to the surface and cleaning us out. Amen. All the dross is coming up to the surface and cleaning us out. Praise Jesus. And so how do you surrender? Loredana asks. You recognize, Loredana, you can't do this on your own. You recognize all that burden that you're carrying. You've got to give it to Jesus. You've got to take his yoke for his burden is light and his yoke is easy. It's a process, it's a discipline, but when you get into doing it, like, Lord, I can't do it. 
Your word says the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. And Jesus, I need you to be willing. Jesus, I need you to come and do it with me. Jesus, I need you because it's not doing it. It's not. Thank you, Father. It's not just allowing the spirit to do it through you. You've got to do it with the spirit. Amen. See, Jesus, um, Jesus came to reveal us to be co-heirs and co-rulers with the Father. So what does that mean? God has finished his works. That means he, that means you, you, he has given you all authority to do the works. You are partnershipping with God. He's the operator. Jesus is the demonstrator. You are the revelator. I'm going to say that one more time. God is the operator. He's the source that pours into the demonstrator who is the soul and the soul pours into the body who is the revelator. That's right. We have the same authority. So we've got to do it with him. He needs your yes to do it together. So if there's any hardness, if there's any areas in your life that you're not ready to give to him, he can't do it through you. He can't. Because why? He's given you free will. He gave us free will to choose him. He gave us free will so not so we don't do it because it's a commandment. We do it because we love him. Because we choose life over death. We choose life over death. As I said yesterday, I don't follow Jesus because uh, it's a commandment. I don't follow God because it's a commandment. I follow him because I love him. Because I'm one with him. Because how can we hate our own soul? Catch that. How can we hate our own body? Are you catching what I'm saying? So I follow him because I'm one with him. I follow him because I love him. Not because it's a commandment. See the commandment, and I've already spoken to you about this. Commandment makes people look at it like works. Like they have to do it to in order to get this and this and this. But no, a relationship is you do it. Because you love the other person. You do it because you want to please the other person. You do it because pleasing that person pleases you. It's a two way. It's a two way. It's a two way relationship brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. So. We do it because we love him. We don't do we don't follow his commandments because it's a commandment. We follow him because we've fallen in love with him because everything everything that we everything that we see of ourselves is him. And I can't wait till you get into that place where you start seeing yourself through his eyes. So in order for you to see yourself through his eyes, you have to surrender. You have to rest your soul in him. As the father's just saying to me, like anything, practice makes perfect. Amen. And we are practicing every day how to walk in him it's like being a toddler stepping into uh you know a baby stepping into a toddler a toddler stepping into a, a child a child stepping into an adult that's what we're doing practice makes perfect brothers and sisters now you've got to think about how are you going about your walk what 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 um how are you going about it what what are you doing Amen. What are you doing with your walk? What what is your daily routine look like? 
Are you a person of prayer? Now then I then I want to emphasize on prayer, not religiously. But if you are doing it religiously, God God like God can use that for his glory because when you have a religious mindset like I did, he allowed me to have that thorn in the flesh to keep me disciplined in him. So when I had a religious spirit where I was like, if I step out, you know, I was so scared to step out of God's will. I was so I was so scared to step out of his will. So I was like, there was a fear in me. At times, not a healthy fear. It was just, you know, gradually getting all that yuckiness in me to be cleaned up. But he kept, but he kept that religious spirit like a thorn in my flesh. So it would keep me disciplined. So I don't know how God is, is doing what he's doing for you guys, but I can speak from my experience. When I came to the Lord, I had a religious mindset, didn't know I had a religious mindset, came under religious leaders and, um, God, what the devil meant for evil, God used that for his glory. He kept that religious thorn in my side so that I would stay in him. So I would do it like always thinking about him. Always like, no, I, I can't, I can't do this. I, I, um, I've got to pray. I've got to do this. 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 So he kept me in that to give me a, a, a disciplined mindset, a kingdom mindset. So though I did it in a religious way, it's still, so by the time that religious spirit was delivered, I, I could stay in that because that's, I was conditioned in that. Amen. I was conditioned in knowing how to walk in him now. That I would wake up every morning, give my first fruit to him. I would pray to him first. And he would start like disciplining me when I would like wake up and, and look at Facebook, wake up and look at Instagram, wake up and, and, and do other things before I seek him. So then he started disciplining me in my walk and started telling me like, Mercedes, you need to spend more time with me. Where's your first fruit going? And, and so like he convicted me to seek him, brothers and sisters. He convicted me to seek him. He convicted me to give him my first fruit. So every morning before my eyes are even open, I say, Shalom, Shalom. Father, I thank you for today is the day that you have made and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, God, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue who rise up against me shall be condemned. Thank you, Father, that I'm the head and not the tail. Thank you, Father, that you cover my sins. Thank you, Father, that 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 whatever I'm going through, you are going to overcome. Hallelujah. Like I just, that was me. That's how he disciplined me. He set my eyes upon him as soon as my, as soon as I was in bed. So you got to think about it. Uh, a God's, a uh, are you thinking about God before you go to bed? Are you thinking about God before you wake up? Amen. Where is your mindset, brothers and sisters? Are you, do you have a heavenly mindset? Are you consciously aware that you are a heavenly being? That's it. And that's how he trained me. Every morning he woke me up. Uh, and, and times he would wake me up um, like 2, 3 in the morning, 12 o'clock, midnight sometimes to pray. Because he was getting me into interceding for him. He get he got me into intercession. So I had a season of intercession. I had a season of discipline. I had a season of, of um grinding, of being pressed and crushed and refined. And that's why I speak the way I speak, hold the way I hold myself, walk the way I walk, because I have gone through it to walk the way I walk. Amen. If you guys knew my testimony, you would be you would be like gobsmacked where I've come from to now but praise God because I give God all the glory that I've overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony because it was by his word that I've overcome trials and tribulations hallelujah but the only way that I was able to do that is I had to rest my soul I had to rest my soul in him I had to just believe that I am in him, uh, that, that every day I'm doing it with him. Every day that I'm not doing it alone. And that's the rest that I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. I'm in the promised land now. I'm in the promised land now, absolutely. I have so much peace and chaos. I have so much peace and mess. 
Um, you know, God, God brings people around me to refine me greatly. Um, areas where I could get uh, triggered or get hurt by something. And it's just the Lord highlighting that area that needs to be dealt in my heart. But I thank God that he's using situations to, to, to refine me. Say someone upsets me or annoys me or hurts me or something. My strength is my weakness. Recognizing that if I do it by my strength, I'm going to go down the broad path of destruction and allow in chaos. But if I do it with my father by his strength, I have peace, I have love, I have joy, I have absolute abundance walking his way. So say someone upsets me, I'll just use it as an example, you know, um, people in my life that uh, God is using to to, to uh, manifest any areas, any hurt in my heart that needs to be dealt with. And I get upset at that person. God allows that to manifest to show me that these are areas that hurt you. These are areas that I need to deal with. So let's deal with it together. And so as an example for me is someone could say something, trigger me, and then the Lord instantly shows me this, 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 and I was like, thank you, God. Amen? And so when I go through that, I thank God for that because I, I, I'm seeing I'm going from glory to glory because God is only allowing everything for His glory to be revealed. He's allowing me to get annoyed at someone. He's allowing me to, 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 to um, you know, have certain thoughts and stuff like that because His glory is being revealed to me every day. Every day, His glory is being revealed to me every day. Whether it's in a conversation, whether it's just um, at a supermarket, whether it's in my thoughts and, and the enemy comes to, to wear me out or something, God always shows me so that I'm always doing this together. And it's always, thank you, Father. He's like saying to me, it's when I recognize these areas in me um, that, I, that, that, that need to be dealt with, I think on him. I seek him. Someone annoys me, I say, Lord, why did I get triggered? Lord, what was that? Lord, why was I feeling that way? You know, it's asking questions. Amen. So God will always manifest something in you to ask questions. He will allow someone to come and annoy you and then you're going to ask him questions. Hallelujah. I love my walk, brothers and sisters. I love it. I love it. And so when I hear people telling me how much they're struggling and stuff, I'll be bold and say this. Well, what are you doing about it? What, what, what discipline are you putting in your life to overcome it? What are the steps are you taking? Amen. Amen. From faith to faith, strength to strength, glory to glory. Hallelujah. So anyone on here that's struggling, 16 people under my voice, I want you to think on this. Areas that you're struggling in your life right now, what are you doing about it? Are you hardening your heart and not surrendering it to God? Or are you giving it over to the Lord and asking him to search you? We've got to start walking kingdomly, brothers and sisters. Absolutely, Laura Dana. Asking is just having intimacy with him. Asking is having friendship with him. Asking is just doing kingdom work with him. Just ask. James says, ask, you know, um, 
You have not because you ask not. So you don't have that peace because you're not asking. You don't have that joy because you're not asking. You don't have that love because you're not asking. Amen? I've got to go soon, but I'll probably jump on a little bit later and dive a deep dive deeper into it. But I do have a Zoom that I have to touch on um, in five minutes. But ask, brothers and sisters, if, if you're struggling in areas of your life, if you're struggling in, in um, I don't know, something in your marriage, you're struggling in, 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 in the way that you're around people, it's because God wants to reveal His glory to you. Because the more He reveals His glory to you, catch this, the more He reveals you. Amen? You can call me a false prophet all you like. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Amen. So I'm going to say that one more time. The more he's the more he reveals his glory to you, the more he's revealing you. He's revealing you. You are the hope of glory that has been revealed to mankind, brothers and sisters. Every day that you deny that that pain, you deny that hurt, you deny that, you deny, 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 His hope and glory can be revealed through you. Amen? His hope and glory can be revealed through you. Every time you deny, 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 you decrease so He could increase. And every time you deny, 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 picture it this way. Your flesh is getting um, um, subjected under Christ. So that means your soul can fellowship with Jesus. Jesus and your soul. And so you and Jesus can fellowship with the Father. John 17, my favorite scripture. Be one with me so you can teach others to be one with us. And that's what I'm trying to teach you, brothers and sisters, to be I'm, I'm, I'm already one with my father and the son. Now I'm teaching you to be one with us. Amen. You want to you wanna follow those who have already entered the promised land. You want to follow those who have already entered the promised land. Not everyone has entered the promised land. And that means Christ formed in them. Not everyone has entered the promised land, brothers and sisters, because they're stuck in the wilderness. They're stuck in the, in the wilderness because of their own disobedience. I'll say that boldly. They're stuck in the wilderness because of their own disobedience. That word that God gave you, have you done it? That thing that God told you to do, have you done it? As I just read that, Laura Dana, I started weeping. My, I just like I just have tears in my eyes right now. You say, "Get me out of here, Jesus," and that's why God has sent me to speak to you all, to get you out of the wilderness, my brothers and sisters. You are not you. You are you are you are to be born in the wilderness, but you are not to continuously struggle in your wilderness. Amen. But those who aren't struggling in the wilderness, God sends back into the wilderness like myself to pluck you out of the wilderness, give you some wisdom, knowledge and understanding of where you're at in your season in the wilderness. But I'll boldly say it to you. Imitate me because I imitate Christ. Follow me because I am in the promised land. Follow me because I know where the promised land is. Follow me because I've seen the Father, I've seen the Son. Just like Paul says, follow me. And hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Follow me. Follow me. 
Follow the fruit, brothers and sisters. Follow the fruit. Follow those who have who manifest the, the kingdom to you. Peace, love, joy, self-control. Amen. So I've got to go in one minute. I love you all so much. But I know this is short. But a short one is a good one. Amen. Um, I'm about to jump on a Zoom. But if you've been blessed by this word, just continuously sow where you grow. Amen. It is finished. It is. It is finished. But you follow those that have spiritually finished, that have, that have won the race and that are just resting their soul in the Lord because they know that Jesus has finished it on the cross. So I actually thank you. I want to leave you with one more word. This is what the Father was speaking to me and I might dive in it deeper when I come back. If there was another day, hear this. Brothers and sisters, I want you to hear this. If there was a, another day, if there was another day, wouldn't have Jesus spoken of another day? Hear what the Lord is saying in that. If there was another day, would not have Jesus spoken about another day? So we've been in the end times for a very, very, very long time. We are just waking up and recognizing we're in end times. Are you catching that? I'm going to say that one more time. Sorry, I had a phone call. We've been in end times for a very long, long, long time. We are just awakening from sleep and recognizing Holy moly, I've been in a life of deception. I have been in a life of wickedness. So the, so, the, so the struggles you've gone through before you met Jesus was your trials and tribulations. Because why? We blindly, ignorantly followed after the things of the world because we didn't know him. We forgot him. So I'll boldly say that. We've been asleep for a very long time. So Genesis to Revelation, it's finished. I'll boldly say that, brothers and sisters. Genesis to Revelation is finished. It's already been fulfilled by Jesus. It's already done. It was fulfilled by Jesus. It was fulfilled by Paul. It was fulfilled by John. It was fulfilled. Now we are living epistles walking out Jesus Christ. We are not people that learn from a letter. We are people that learn by the Spirit. Amen. So if this is all you know, then you're just, you're just as the same as the scribes. You haven't gone beyond the scribes. You haven't gone beyond the scribes. Are you catching this? If this is all you know of God, then you haven't gone beyond the scribes. There's a scripture that speaks on that. If your wisdom is the wisdom of, like is, 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 is of the scribes back in the days and you haven't gone beyond that, then you haven't entered through the veil. You haven't entered through the veil, the blood of Jesus. You haven't entered through the veil. You haven't stepped into the New Testament. I'll say that one more time. If Jesus spoke about another day, if there was another day, Jesus would have spoke about it. If there was another day, Jesus would have spoke about it. See, it said that we that he will reveal himself in the last days. He's been revealing himself for 
for a long, long time now, brothers and sisters. He's been revealing himself for a very long, long time. People have just been asleep. This is why it speaks about the first resurrection will rise and that you won't die the second death. Because when you have truly understood who you are and whose you are, you can't die the second death. Because you are in perfect love. Amen. So I'm going to leave you with that. I might touch on that a little bit more when I come back. But I love you all so much. Bye, guys. God bless you. May the Lord keep you, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to every one of you. Bye. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen.